My body, I think, is going like, that's a reaper, that's a reaper, that's a reaper, and it's shutting down. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Sean Evans, host of First We Feast Hot Ones, coming at you from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and you guys tweet me hot sauces all the time. Sean, you gotta try this. Sean, you gotta try that. And this might come as a shock to you, but I do not have time to just be chugging hot sauce all day long. So today, I'm gonna meet up with my hot sauce guru, Noah from Heatnist, and he's gonna show me that new shit, that pure, uncut, high-grade Colombian hot sauce. And who knows? We might even be able to get a couple bottles for season three. So come on, let's go mix it up. Let's push, not pull. Sean, good to see you. Good to see you, buddy. How you been? Been good. I like what you've done with the counter here. Thanks, well today's an exceptional day. We actually have some hot ones in stock. Normally wow. it's as soon as we can get them out of the kitchen, they're out the door. How are Hot Ones fans when they come into the store? Because I have a feeling that they're an excitable bunch. They seem to be. Hot Ones fans are a special breed. <laughs> <laughs> They come in, sort of check out the shelves quietly, and they see that Hot Ones isn't there, and it's almost like they're asking for something. Yo, you got the, the Hot Ones? Like all that back room? <laughs> a lot of people come in here trying to recreate the experience of Hot Ones that you've made on the show, so they'll uh, try and do a lineup of 10 sauces and sequence things and get the order right. The super in-touch Hot Ones fans realize that it's not just about a progression, it's about creating this sort of hot sauce symphony because all hot sauces are different. Absolutely, and you have different pepper types that are gonna affect you in different ways, some where the heat hits right up front, and, and you can definitely see this in the interviews when some of the people, you know, they can get you know, 10 seconds into the answer before it actually hits them. Yes. Um, so, you know, the ghost pepper has a bit of that delay versus, you know, habanero, you're gonna feel right away in the back of your throat. All right, and I wanna talk about the landscape of hot sauce for a second, because maybe it's just like I'm in that storm and it feels this way, but everybody keeps talking about hot sauce. That's something that you always carry with you, hot just sauce. For anyone who loves hot sauce, they know once you're in, you're in. There's only one direction to go. You just keep getting more engaged, you keep getting more acclimatized and accustomed to it, and you want it with every meal, and you go a little bit spicier you don't go the other direction. And that's like almost a warning to people out there. If you start getting into hot sauce and instead of feeling discomfort with the feeling that it puts in your mouth, you sort of start to fall in love with it, forget about it. Like you have a new, it's a new person now. You're now yeah. a reborn person. It's like a drug in some ways, but it <laughs> reached this point where you can eat something super hot and you just get this euphoric high. Well, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what all I'm doing. All I'm doing is chasing the dragon. Like everybody thinks <laughs> I have this show to pay my rent. I don't, like it's just because I need my fix. All right, Noah, I can talk to you about hot sauce all day, but this is a business trip. Season three is coming at us and it's coming at us quick and we might need some new sauces in the mix. So let's go do some shopping, huh? Absolutely. So in thinking about what would work well on wings and play a part in this symphony, Definitely a lot of good options. I'm here in Brooklyn, Queen Majesty Red Habanero and Black Coffee. Red Habanero is a hotter variety of habanero, and the black coffee in here would give some really dark notes that would play well on the wings and be a good contrast to a lot of the Louisiana-style flavors that you've had in the past. Adobo Locos Hamajang. This is from Maui, Hawaii. This is a smoked ghost pepper sauce and apple cider vinegar. Personally, I really like this on wings a lot. Uh, when you smoke the peppers, you round out the edges on the heat so it sort of smooths out the ghost pepper. But like you know, the ghost pepper still will come at you yes, from behind. Yes, <laughs> it, uh, it chases you. It's not burning from here, it's like coming from inside up. One thing that we're seeing a lot of these days in sauces is smoky. This is with tamarind, so a little sweet. Lots of smoke from those ancho marita peppers. This is from San Antonio, Texas, almost like a barbecue hot sauce. Dirty Dick's hot sauce is awesome on wings. This is from Vermont. This is another habanero sauce on the hotter side. This is a second half sauce. When we start to get up to the higher heat stuff. Uh-oh, so this is some muscle right here. The bullfighter, I mean, just look at the color on that. 
that you can tell is going to do some damage. <laughs> this is a Pablo's out of Evans, Georgia, and the bullfighters with aged ghost peppers and aged red habanero. And a little bit of cherry. That's where that touch is sweet. <laughs> I've got a couple of limited editions in wow. our test kitchen out back. Something to really get our spice on. All right, so what you're looking at here is this sort of makeshift Hot Ones lineup that's been curated by Noah. But Noah, before we start, I need to know, what do you think of the lineup that we currently have? Are there any blind spots? Are there things you think we can improve? I've had uh, almost all the sauces you have in the lineup. I'm not gonna say anything bad about anyone, but I think the Hot Ones fans know how you feel about some of them. Pain 100 to me is the worst tasting hot sauce. <laughs> so you'd never put this on a sandwich. Mad Dog 357 is a tougher sauce to endure than Blair's. Are you saying this to make me eat this one? Where we see wings now going in a lot of fun directions. What people are doing is really reimagining the wings. We see a lot of sweet stuff, a lot of smoky stuff, um, in addition to super hot stuff. All right, let's kick it up then. All right, so let's start off with this uh, ancho and marita peppers. So this, I think, there's tamarind in here, and whenever you have a sweet fruit like tamarind, that's gonna pair really well with you know, the richness of the wings. That's good, that's tasty. This that's is a good, good sauce one. You know what I think that would do is that would be like, oh, your little weird Wayne's World set here, like maybe this isn't such a freak show because we'd open with a sauce that people actually like to taste. We wanna lull them into that sense of security. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Okay, next up, let's really switch it up. This is our mustard and horseradish sauce with a little bit of that dark rum in there. Big mustard in that. It'll light you up a little bit though. Oh yeah. It's a reminder, hey, this is a, you're on hot ones. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't burning questions. So next up, let's do uh, the hellacious hot sauce. I think this one's kind of funny because the skull and crossbones on the label, it's really not too hot. This is definitely a first half sauce. It's a good hot sauce. All right, next, next up, we've got the Secret Aardvark Drunken Jerk. This one's habanero, also a little bit of rum in there. And this one has lots of rich spices. Ooh, that's gotta be on a burger, that's on pizza, whatever I'm tasting right now. Dirty Dicks, very aggressive brand. This is the only sauce I've ever seen and really liked that had banana, and you'll definitely get the banana notes. Big time get the banana. I'm a huge banana fan. Is Noah, you're knocking it out of the park right now. Mm -hmm. I gotta be real with you. We have a Queen Majesty Red Habanero and Black Coffee. Yeah, I'm curious on this one. So in here, balance with a little bit of ginger, keep it fresh, not overpowering the Red Habaneros. No, but pretty hot. Yeah. So this is Hamajang, this is smoked ghost pepper, with some habanero in there too. Uh-oh. And this is smoked with kiawe, a Hawaiian wood. So Layered. Yeah. Layered. Heat-wise, because this has a habanero and the ghost, it is gonna work in that same effect. And it's gonna, it's a little time delayed too. Yeah, that's the ghost. Actually marching on. takes uh -oh. that same approach, but brings it up to 10. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the bullfighters. This is the red habanero. So that's gonna hit you in the back of the throat, punch right away. And then just as that passes is when the ghost pepper kicks in. Before we start, just cause I'm slowing you down a little bit, but I do actually have a really important question because it comes up all the time. And it's this thing about Scoville units. So uh, the fans are always like, what is it? 15, six, blah, 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 blah. Like we've fucked up the graphics like a million times. So people get upset about Scoville units in that way. But they also, I think, put a lot of reliance on Scoville units. And what I've always thought is that marketers really take advantage of Scoville units. And they're like, this taco's 9 million Scoville, da 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 da. Do people mess with Scovilles too much? Should people rely on Scovilles? Do they matter? What's the deal with Scovilles? Personally, I think it is probably abused a bit too much. The reality is like if something was 9 million Scoville, all right, that's a lot hotter than pepper spray. So the you know, 9 million <laughs> Scoville taco would be like, you know, getting pepper sprayed in the face for 10 minutes. All right, so this one, I can tell it's hot. It's our bowl. Nose is starting to run a little bit. That's how I know I'm doing a cannonball into the deep end, Noah. Okay, coming in, coming in not so bad, but it has that heat thing that you know it's gonna hit you later. When I taste and I know, and here it comes, and here it comes. That's, yeah, that's a good hot. That's a good, what are we putting that one at? Is that about eight? Is that about nine? 
That's probably, yeah, sitting at about an eight and a yeah. half up there. Yeah. And keep in mind, you're a professional, so when you have a guest on the show, they're not in the same league that you play at. So yes. That is going to be quite hot. All right, so this one is Szechuan peppercorn and ghost pepper. Szechuan peppercorn, of course, is the famous tongue tingling, numbing one. Uh, and this has about 18 ghost peppers in each bottle. I like to say it burns your soul. Like this one tastes expensive. I know it doesn't make sense, but it does. It's a rich sauce. Yeah, they didn't have to use much vinegar here. So mm -mm. There wasn't much room left after all the ghost peppers. Sometimes in the afternoon, I just need my fix. And I'll take a little hummus and a little of this and mix it together. Just put that on a cracker just to, just to get me back to normal. If that's number nine, obviously there's only, there's not so much room to that ceiling, but there is a little bit. This means we're going up a notch. Yeah, and uh, up here we have, this we don't keep on the shelves. This is a super limited edition. This is a Reaper sauce and this is pure Reaper. So what I got for you here today, if yeah, this maybe is I'll take a, hit. a little too hot, I got you a little <laughs> the whipped cream. Let me, kind of bring up something that drives me nuts because I feel like people always try to tell me, they give me tips for dealing with hot food. And I'm always like, dude, are you fucking crazy? I've had the hottest hot sauces, I've eaten Reapers. Like, you don't know anything I don't know, but low key, water does, maybe it's just psychological, but if I have an ice water on the table and my mouth is dying, I will reach for that ice water and I feel like it does help me or it cools my mouth or there's something that it does that works for me. There's that, is that just in my head or? It's that instantaneous relief, but as soon as that water's out of your mouth, you're right back where you started. All right. Oh my God. It looks like we got a clump. This is a... Uh... It's a professional portion for a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try the things this we do. The things we do, all right. Okay, so instantly, ooh! That's instant. You know what it is? Is it's like Pavlov's dog, where like I taste it, and instantly I'm back to the basement at Jimmy's 43. I'm <laughs> back in Central Park with Chili Klaus, and my body, I think, is going like, that's a reaper, that's a reaper, that's a reaper, and it's shutting down. <laughs> it's going into self-defense mode. It's going into self-defense mode. Shields up. <laughs> but I don't think, Jesus. <laughs> but tasty, right? That's the thing about the reaper, is it just is like, such a powerful and like robust and profound taste. Exactly, to me it's like eating a steak when you have a taste of this. Yeah, it's just like... one little drop. <sighs> <laughs> Mmm. Damn. Well, I have one special thing here. Uh, this was a gift from our friend Brody Dawson. Shut and this up, is Brody. a jar. 100 ghost peppers for our brothers at Heat and Nist. Because why not? <laughs> Sometimes we get a little bored and want to send our brothers in Heat a little treat. This jar contains exactly 100 ghost peppers mashed with just enough vinegar to get them moving around. It's really hot. So don't fuck with it, okay? It's in the right direction, <laughs> I think. Try it, I think. Okay. Woo! So in the same way that like you really taste the Reaper on the Reaper one, you taste the ghost on this oh, yeah. right away. I think that might be have something to do with, you know, there being a hundred ghost peppers in there. Yeah, ghost army. All right, Noah, thank you. A lot to digest here in more ways than one. I'm gonna go back, take these findings, compare it to the algorithm. Maybe a sauce or two here will end up in season three. If I'm going off the rip, let me tell you the ones I like. Number one in this, I love this. Low key, dirty dicks, great hot sauce. And then when we work our way up here, Pablo's. And the Hamajam. Can't go wrong with those either. So I'm gonna take all the notes back Take it over to the brain trust over at Hot Ones. You know, we've got our finest men just punching in algorithms, balancing equations, and we'll figure it all out. Keep sending us your suggestions. Tweet them at First We Feast. Send them to me. Do whatever you gotta do. Noah, always Sean. a blast when you have me over at Eatonist. I appreciate it, man. I'll see you soon. I love it. Keep up the good stuff.